Now Locke's, uh, the excerpt from Locke here examines a slightly different question than we've seen say with Ep Aristotle or Epicurus. Now with Locke, um, he's not concerned so much with you know, what is the good life or how or you know, what kind of character should a, a person develop or what kind of person or what kind of person should you be, what kind of what sort of thing should you be. Rather, Locke is concerned with questions uh, rather like what do you have the right to do? Right? What can you do? What is a permissible uh, act, an action? And he doesn't really focus much on the character of a person. Instead, he's asking this question, you know, what do you have the right to do? And what you have the right to do is, uh, you know, starts with the state of nature, and uh, which follows the law of nature. Right? And after that, you can enter, you know, what, what we kind of talked about before as, as the social contract. And he gives reasons why you should want to enter into the social contract. Well, here I am. I'm in the state of nature again. Now, you know, despite the fact I'm walking amongst the trees, Locke doesn't mean that the state of nature in the sense of, you know, living out in the woods, right? Like Hobbes, what Locke is talking about is you know, the, the state that we're in absent a political state, right? or, you know, rather the political state that we're in when there isn't any political, any other kind of government involved. This is our, our, our natural state in the sense that this is what we are according to our nature, according to our nature. So, um, but Locke's version of the state of nature is pretty different from Hobbes. Now, I'll let you go back and review the video for Hobbes if you'd like, or, or review the text. Hobbes had a much more, you know, <laughs> free-for-all version of the state of nature. Locke's different. In the state of nature, you know, both Locke and Hobbes are going to say we're, we're both, we're, we're equal. Everyone's equal to each other. And what Hobbes is talking about, this equality has to deal with, like, physical capacities. And in the sense that no one person can just, by sheer force of will and domination, just overpower everyone else. Well, Locke, I'm sure, is going to agree with that. But in addition to that, he's going to say we have equal moral worth, right? No one person is more important than another. No one person's life is worth more than another's, right? So, no, we have equal moral worth in addition to, you know, capacities. Now, since, you know, one person is any more, more important than another, uh, in this state of nature, we are free to do what we want, right? Every person is just as important as every other person, which means every person is just as sovereign as any other person. Right? Uh, you have the right to do whatever you want, and you don't have to ask for permission. You, you, you can dispose of yourself and your possessions how you see fit. If you want to put pink garden gnomes around your house, you can put pink garden gnomes around your house. You don't have to worry about the neighborhood association. If you want to uh, decorate your tree in uh, little uh, yellow uh, flowers and, uh, you know, spray skunk spray around the place, you, you can do that, right? That, that's, you don't have to ask people's permission to do that. You may dispose of yourself and your positions as you see fit within the law of nature. Now, both... Hobbes and Locke had a law of nature. Remember, uh, Hobbes thought that the law of nature was to preserve your life and, and you know, to avoid not only it's the end of it, but also avoid any threats. And for this reason, you're supposed to enter into the state. For Locke, uh, there is a law of nature. Right? And it's a law according to your human nature, is the idea. So, you, in the state of nature, you may act, you may do as you please. That is your freedom. Right? That is your freedom. But you may act as, as you please within the law of your nature. I'm in the state of nature, and I must abide by the law of nature. Well, what does that mean? Well, he's already said I've got freedoms, right? I've got freedom to dispose of myself and my possessions as I please. I don't have to ask anybody's permission for what I want to do with my, myself or my things. But I still have limits. I may not destroy myself. I'm not allowed to just simply destroy myself. Uh, that much Locke and Hobbes have in common. I have, since I'm morally worthwhile, right, according to my nature, I'm morally worthwhile, I may not just simply destroy myself. 
And as far as my possessions, I can't just simply destroy my possessions either. I can't just simply, you know, I, I can't just take my hat and light it on fire for no reason. If I'm going to destroy my hat, it has to be for a good purpose. And that, you know, that purpose, that use of it, has to exceed, uh, you know, the value of its continued existence. So my hat's really great for covering my head and keeping, keeping the shade, keeping the sun out of my eyes. And so if, if uh, I'm going to destroy my hat, it's got to somehow serve that purpose better. So in the law of nature, I can't destroy myself. I can't uh, simply just wantonly destroy my uh, property. Now, in addition to that, whatever I choose to do with myself or my property, I can't interfere with other people's use of themselves and their property. So I can't wantonly destroy my neighbor's property as well. I also can't just simply take it. Uh, I can't use my property to inhibit my neighbor's freedom. Right? Or, or rather, or not even just my neighbor, everybody else. So it's kind of a hefty responsibility. Uh, I, I, can may, I may do what I want, but I can't interfere with other people and I can't just simply wantonly destroy things. So depending on your perspective, you might think what Locke has to say is pretty good so far. I mean, after all, hey, I can do what I want. And since there isn't a political state, you know, I know there's this law of nature, but uh, you know, who's going to enforce it? Right? I'll go beat up my neighbor and take his cow. That cow looks good. I'm going to go beat up my neighbor and take his cow. Well, if he did something like that, Locke says, you're deciding to live by a different law than the law of nature, which is really this law of reason, is what he's going to call it, a law of reason. We all have a will. We all make decisions. We are, we are all equally valuable. So since we are all equally valuable we make these decisions, we shouldn't interfere with, the, with other people's decisions. Right? If they want to live their way, their life, the way they want to, then, then yeah, we should let them do that. And if you decide to interfere with other people's lives in this way, well, you're living by a different law. I mean, you're living by some kind of law that you are now more important than everybody else. All right, well, you can try to do that. that that's, I suppose that's your choice. However, you are now, you know, a tyrant, right? You've declared yourself more important than everybody else. Well, if that happens, you know, there may not, you know, you might say there's no police, but everybody in the, in the state of nature is as sovereign as anybody else. That means not that there aren't any police. That means that everybody is the police and everybody has the right to punish you. Everybody has the right to punish you. And, you know, maybe to do it again and again. You should be punished if you decide to live by this wild law, wild tyrannical law of yours. You decide to take your neighbor's cow. You, you, you know, people are gonna, should gang up and, and punish you for it. Now, punishment for Locke serves two purposes. Uh, to, uh, you know, restrain the offender and to... Uh, uh, you know, prevent the offender from, from wanting to do it again. So it, you know, gives the offender good reason not to, uh, not to subvert the law of nature again. Now, you may not want to live by the law of nature, but you probably want to live by this law of self-preservation, which means you behave yourself around your neighbors, right? Especially if they're going to beat, you know, take pitchforks and beat, you know, beat you up for, <laughs> for uh, uh, violating the law of nature. The second thing uh, a person may be punished for, reparation. So if I go steal that guy's cow, well, then I got to pay it back, right? And punishing me for that, for not only the cow, but, you know, the trauma of stealing it, and maybe I destroyed some property taking the cow, you know, things like that. Uh, reparations for uh, taking the cow must also be paid. Now, Locke's very clear, right? Reparations can only be given only pay back to to the one who was at a loss right that you know that's the only person that may take reparations not you know everybody else can't just take a cow <laughs> however everybody can punish for the purpose of uh you know, preventing you know convincing the offender not to do this again everybody can punish uh you know to give the offender what they deserve they deserve to be punished for their crimes because they've decided to live as a tyrant. 
And these are, these are the two reasons uh, for, or these are the two reasons, the two permissibilities behind punishment. And again, since we're in the law of nature, it's not that there aren't any police, it's that everybody is the police. Now, so far, as I've been in the state of nature, I've been kind of lucky. I haven't had to enter into the state of war. A state of war is a state where I'm an enemy of something, somebody else. And it's a state where my life is threatened by somebody else. Somebody else is trying to take over my sovereignty. Some is trying to you know, either destroy my life or take away what I've been working for. You know, trying to take away my choices. And for Locke, trying to take away somebody's choices is as bad as trying to take away their life. And when that happens, when, when somebody's doing that, they enter the state of war. And when they enter the state of war, you may kill that person. And the punishment can be death. In the state of war, the punishment can be death. And, yeah, I mean, everybody's life is, is worthwhile here. But, you know, Locke doesn't really necessarily say this, but he, probably something along the lines of what he's saying is like, yeah, your, your life is valuable. And in order to prevent your life from being lost by somebody who's trying to destroy you, you have to kill him. You have to kill him. So that part, you know, you may not find too distressing, too alarming. But here's something else that Locke adds on to this. By the way, a thief enters into a state of war with you. If a thief is stealing your property, you may kill them. You don't have to, but you may kill them. They are threatening your life in the sense, you know, even though they may not have harmed you, something he says, even though they may not harm you, they are threatening your life in the sense that they are threatening your choices. They're threatening your ability to live your life. Because you know, imagine this, right? You're, you're, trying to, you're trying to survive. So you are growing your food and you're raising your cows and you're, you're trying to make a living. And then somebody comes along and steals away your living. They are stealing away your life. Well, for Locke, that's just as bad as trying to actually physically end it. So thieves, for Locke, enter into a state of war. And if they're entering into a state of war, if they're threatening your sovereignty... You can kill them. I don't know if you've noticed, but we got a pretty wonderful world around here. Beautiful. And there's lots to have, right? There's lots of food, lots of resources to use. Now for Locke, all of this has been given to all of us. It hasn't been given to just one person. Remember, this is a state of nature. Every person is just as important as every other person. All of this has been given to all of us. It's uh, to be held by us in common. It, it was given for our good, our well-being. Okay. That's great. I mean, we, we like to hear this. But, you know, since it's good for, I mean, it's here for, for all of us, um, you know, we should be able to use it. That's the idea. We should be able to use what's been given to us for our own good. But how do I do this when I've got other people who also want to use all of this, right? It's because it's been given to all of us in common. So even though it, it's given to all of us in common, which it might be another way of saying it belongs to all of us, and right? it belongs to all of us, we're responsible for all of this. Um, yeah, even though it's, it's, you know, for all of us in common, it belongs to all of us, there still has to be way, a way that I can take some of it to use it for myself. I mean, if, it, if it's good for all of us, so I shouldn't take from anybody else, well, then we're all going to, you know, suffer and die. Well, that, that's not going to work. So there has to be some way that I can acquire property, is, is the idea. So, uh, to do this, Locke says, like, look, you know, if there is one, there's, you know, all of this is for all of us. That's true, right? All of this is, all, all of this is true. But I am for me only, right? I am, I belong to myself only. Nobody else owns me. And, and I can't, consequently, he's one of the things he's going to say, not in here, but in other, other places, I can't sell myself to somebody else. I am for me only. But what that also means is that uh, what I work, what I do with my labor, is also mine. So if I work for it, if I acquire something from what's good out here, that's something that's mine. 
So I can walk around here in these woods and I can pick up acorns to eat and I can pick up fruit to eat. And there are, there are animals in these woods so I can go out and I can hunt the animal. And since I'm the one that hunted the animal and, and using it for food, well then that's mine. Because I belong to me, I'm my own property and my labor is also mine. So this is how I'm supposed to acquire from the world around me from what's good. It's all, you know, all of this is for all of us, but I can go out and acquire what's for all of us through my labor. Well, I've got lots of stuff here in the state of nature that I can, uh, in nature that I can acquire. We've got cactus that provides nutrition, also provides water. We've got this tree here. If it ever bears fruit, I can take uh, fruit from the tree got some grasses. Uh, I've got some dead st dead wood around here. I can pick up the dead wood and acquire that. So you know, if I'm acquiring this, I'm mixing with my labor, well it becomes mine. Now here's a question. Can, can I just get whatever I want to just keep it? Can I hoard it all to myself? Well, I was going to say no, you can't. You can take what you need. Sure, you can take what you can use. Okay. But you can't just simply take whatever you want. Remember, all of this is for all of us. So if you take something and you don't use it, it spoils. It's ruined. If you, heck, if you take something and you never use it and you just kind of push it away and you know, store it someplace where nobody can find it, it can't be used. All of this is for all of us. Well, that means I can't just simply destroy all of this. I can't let it go to waste. Other people have to have the opportunity to take what they need as a part of their own choices, as a part of their own lives and their own will. They have to be able to take what they need in order to make it theirs. So I can take what I want, it becomes mine. If I mix my labor with it, if I, if I actually use it, I, I, it's a product of my decision and my action is physically within my possession. Okay, I can do that. But I can't just take everything and I, I can't just you know hoard it all and, and stuff it off away. I have to give other people the opportunity to uh, uh, live, live, for, live their own lives as well. So that works for, you know, like things, items. Okay, well what about the land? Right, can I just say, you know what, wherever I see I own this land. Well, no. Right? Same, for the same reason. Yeah, other people have to, all of this is for all of us in common. It's not just for me, it's for all of us in common. Well, that means that if I take some land, you know, suppose I, I take this little area here. I make this area here for my crops, my food, my uh, animals, my shelter, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build a nice little cabin right over there. <laughs> Fence it off a little bit to enclose some animals. I can do that. I mix that with my labor. I can do that. But, I have to leave uh, enough for everybody else or I have to give something as good as for everybody else. So, suppose I section off a lot of land to raise a bunch of crops. All right, I'm using that land for the crops. Well, if, if I'm doing that, I have to give to other people like the excess of those crops. I have to give as good as that land, meaning Right? They're using the land to grow the crops, meaning I have to give them that, those crops. If I'm going to take a whole bunch of land for crops, I have to make sure people can eat with them. So if I take land, I have to leave enough for everybody else, or as good, or give as good as the land for everybody else. You know, I can take, suppose I want land for, you know, hiking, right? I want to enjoy nature. Well, if I do that, I have to leave as much for everybody else or give as good, right? Whatever good I'm taking from that land, that enjoyment of it, I have to give as good for other people. So I have, you know, so different, you know, Locke has a different idea of the state of nature than Hobbes. Hobbes is going to say you, you do whatever you want to preserve your life, whatever. Right? And everybody else can do that too. Well, Locke says, yeah, I mean, you can live your life as you want, but you have to live that life within the law of nature. That means you have to respect other people's lives. You have to respect not only the fact that they're living, but their choices as well. 
I can live as I want, but I can't interfere with other people. That means, in terms of property, I can take what I want, what I can use, right? Just, but I can't let it spoil because I'm in effect stealing it from somebody else because all this is for everybody's good. And I can take land as I want, but I have to leave it, leave uh, uh, as I have to leave uh, as much for everybody else, or give as good as for everybody else.